Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. So we're still at the road. We are still heading down Spur Tree Hill. We are going towards Western Jamaica. Continue to sit back, continue to relax, and continue to enjoy this journey with me. Now, coming up shortly, we'll be uploading the birthday greetings video. We haven't dropped any birthday greetings video since Wednesday. Stand by for that. Also, we are now on Patreon. The URL is patreon.com slash links. We haven't started uploading any content to it as yet, but you can go there and sign up. We'll be dropping some exclusive videos over there. Also, we'll be dropping some videos over there that is too grimy for YouTube. And signing up on Patreon is a way of supporting this movement. The Patreon website is still in its infancy stage, but there is a lot being planned for over there. I will also be dropping the link in the description below. So. Click on it and go and sign up, alright? Now, we first highlighted a story on Wednesday of this week. The Westmoreland Municipal Council, they had served letters on the street side vendors of Uptown Savannah Lamar, stating that no vending will be allowed on the street. Yesterday, we went to Independence Park where the Municipal Council had designated the vending area for Uptown Savannah Lamar and I spoke with some of the vendors. If you hadn't watched yesterday's video, you can go back and check it out. Well, today, I am happy to report that good sense has prevailed. The decision by the municipal council was rescinded and the vendors, they are being allowed to sell on the streets of Uptown Savannah Lamar today, Christmas Eve, or should I say Grand Market. Grand Market in Jamaica is one of the most anticipated events of the Christmas season. It is held in all major towns across Jamaica. Today, Christmas Eve, Grand Market is known to be a colorful and energetic affair that provides the opportunity for shoppers to make last-minute purchases or secure unique items that had not been available all year round. Grand Market activities last all day today, Christmas Eve, but by 6 o'clock this evening, the number of shoppers increases a whole lot. To facilitate the multitude of shoppers, vending rules are usually relaxed to accommodate vendors along the sidewalks. Items on sale in stores and along the sidewalks usually include Christmas decoration, clothing, food, ties, household products, etc. Entertainment in the form of sound systems can be heard throughout the towns, supporting street dances that continues into Christmas Day tomorrow. And for the children, there might be the bounce about and an occasional Santa Claus impersonator. Now, I, as a youngster, growing up in the town of Lucy in Anova, I always look forward to Grand Market. Once again, I am happy that the vendors will be allowed to sell on the streets of Uptown Savannah Lamar because if they were not allowed to do that, it would not be Grand Market. It would be a Grand Macri. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, my viewers, my subscribers, watch this video. Because I don't understand why them always are come and still look a picnic and I still don't care about them fish like them love, man. Twelve never thing in them care. Anybody father this, please come get your father. Your father is a pervert. Where are you? Video. Sir, what are you doing right here? I'm going to see you, sir. I'm going to see you, sir. Do it already. Me at your life? You sure? You need to leave, sir. It is very inappropriate. Every day I'm coming to see back feast. The family man, people. No, based on the reaction of that guy, I have no reason to doubt what the females in the video were saying. Do you? No, I'm going to slow down the video <laughs> so you can take a good look at this guy's face. 
watch and listen again. Because I don't understand why them always are come and I still look up at me and I still don't care about them back them fish. Like them love man. Two of them are going to care. Anybody father this, please come get your father. Your father is a pervert. Where are you? Sir, what are you doing right here? Are we going to see you? Yes, we see you, yes, I do it already. Me at your life? You sure? You need to leave, sir. It is very inappropriate. Every day I'm coming to our back feet. The family man, people. See, bless the play there. Dirty man. Ah, boy. No, I carried a story yesterday about that young man on your screen. His name is Chris Van Gale, but he was popularly known as Brother Chris. Brother Chris is 28 years old. He was shot and killed early yesterday morning, Friday, December 23, 2022, sometime after 12 midnight along the New Hope Main Road in the Little London area in the parish of Westmoreland. Now, what we are learning is that Brother Chris... He was well loved. From he was in high school, he has been involved in Christianity. It is said that he knew the Bible inside out. The big questions some persons are asking is who killed Brother Chris and why? Brother Chris, he was not known to have any enemy. He was said to be humble. He was always smiling and he was always preaching the gospel. Something happened Thursday night that have a lot of persons close to Brother Chris puzzled. Hear this now. Brother Chris, he's from Russia. But for a little bit over four years now, he has been living at Sigrid Street in Savannah Lamar. Other church members also live at the same house where he was living. They are all members of the King Jesus Pentecostal Fellowship Church. That church is located at Sheffield in Westmoreland. Brother Chris, he was a member of the church choir. You would have seen or heard elsewhere that Brother Chris, he was on his way from choir practice when he was killed. That is not true. Brother Chris, when he usually go to choir practice, he never, ever ride his bicycle to choir practice. The church in Sheffield is about 24 kilometers or 15 miles away from where Brother Chris was living. In fact, no choir practice was held at the church Thursday night. The last choir practice that was held at the church was held before convocation and convocation was held over a week ago. So, persons close to Brother Chris, they are now wondering what was he doing in that area about some 15 miles away from his home at that time of the night. It is said that Brother Chris, he rode out on his bicycle from his home Thursday night about some minutes to 8 o'clock when he was found dead. The same bicycle that he was seen riding when he was leaving his home, it was found beside him. From all indication, Brother Chris, he was riding the bicycle at the time he was killed. The big questions, like I said before, many persons are asking are who killed Brother Chris and why? We continue to dig. Stand by. But let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to do it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button. As also, hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we upload a new video, you will be the first to be notified. And for you, yeah man, you. Who are complaining that this part of the videos is annoying to you? <laughs> Remember me tell you, <laughs> you are going to be annoyed so till. Because guess what? Me not stop. My nice, clean subscribers, they are asking of me to remind them. So if you are annoyed, that are for your business. <laughs> yeah, man. And season's greetings to everybody. Now, in the final story for today, I carried a few stories about Eric Clark, otherwise known as Legacy. Legacy was on the Hanover Police most wanted list for over eight years. Legacy, he was wanted for the machete slaying of Gafta Grant, otherwise called Rice. 
Rice, he was killed on the night of Thursday, November 20, 2014. I decided to do some digging into this case because legacy, he was held by the police on Tuesday, December 13. He was held in a house in the same district of Cashel. The same district where he used to live before he killed Rice. The same district where he killed Rice. And the same district where Rice himself used to live. I did some digging because it is clear that some persons in the area, they were protecting Legacy. And I wanted to know why they were protecting him. Because it's not like Legacy was rich and could pay his way around. The questions I was asking myself were, was Legacy so loved? Or were the people thinking that Rice deserved what he got? So I reached out to a few persons in the area and they were all saying the same thing. I'm going to read a WhatsApp message from one of the persons. This message sums up what most of the persons I spoke with were saying. The message is on your screen. It says, Back then in the days, Legacy used to fry chicken and sell in the square in Cashel. He used to sell other little stuffs too. If it's even $100 you have and you want chicken, you're getting it. And uh, right there so, in the square, he used to live too. Then Rice started a cook shop in the square right beside Legacy. So you understand what this person is saying so far? The person is saying that Legacy, he first started a little cook shop in the Cashel Square. He used to fry chicken and sell other stuffs also. The person is also saying that Rice, that's Gafta Grant, he then started selling in the Cashel Square also. The person went on. When Rice clean up him chicken, all of the water are over legacy place him dash it. All of the kitchen waste are over legacy place him dash it. So what this person is saying is that Rice, he went there after legacy and him start style up legacy by violating his place. Throwing dirty water or Queen's language. Throwing dirty water and other stuffs over legacy side. The person went on. So all this time, Rice come there, come see him and a cause trouble with him. Everybody know when legacy go by the machete, him never hide. Him talk and him sit down every day and sharpen it and talk say. Him a go use it, kill Rice if him not leave him alone. You hear that? Let me repeat that part. What the person just said is, everybody know when legacy go by the machete. Him never hide it. Him talk and him sit down every day and sharpen it and talk say. Him a go use it, kill rice, if him no leave him alone. The person went on. The thing is, rice had an illegal firearm and that's why him did think say. Him high and mighty. And legacy, no, same did have the gun too. The person went on. On the night when Rice died, him closed up him shop and was walking away to go home. Legacy was sitting outside and an argument developed. Rice did still a walk go down the road until Legacy tell him, Go S your mother. And him turn back to come defend that. And Legacy, no give him no chance. In just start put chop on him. You hear that? The person closed off by saying this. Long and short of the story, he had no right to chop rice, but legacy was provoked day in and day out. And a man can only bear so much and no more. The man cup was full until it start overflow. And him just do what him do. <laughs> My viewers, my subscribers, what are your views on this one? The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Brick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. Jamaica live in unity If we just unite What a country
Come now the land of the gun East and north and south to me turn Country and town man a 